Hey everybody, the Johnny Cage here, welcoming you back to some more of Let's Play Donkey Kong Country 2! Last time we left off, we made it through the first half of this final world here at King K. Kroll's Creep. That's not what it is at all. Anyhow, so we got some uh, fun little water levels to start off. I thought that the first level in this world was the last little water level in the game, but this technically is, but this is just fun. This is just ice skating 101 right here with uh, our good friend Clapper, the last time we're going to be able to see him at all. That seal. He was so happy. He loved his job. He really did. You could see that every day he came to work. Uh, he should have been employee of the month. Or employee of the LP, we'll say. Yes, because, you know, I'm sure these animals are getting loads of, of benefits and, and pay from the amount of world saving they're doing in this game. But anyhow, guys, so uh, let's see what's going on. Last night I uh, was hanging out with some friends. I got the chance to finally play uh, PlayStation All-Stars. Uh, I don't know if I went on a bit of a rant about that or not, because I did play it briefly when it first came out, um, and it felt like a real, at first it felt like a really kind of sad game almost, and it's a strange word to use, but um, it felt sad because there's so many licensed characters in that game that PlayStation has just n done nothing with. I mean, uh, well, we could get to Sir Daniel from Medieval, which what, there was Medieval 1 and 2 for the PS1. That was like, what, 96? 97 at best? Just, uh, the whole series, it, the whole thing just felt sad. It's like, forgotten character, forgotten character. Boom! That's how you beat a level right there! Oh, I actually like, really enjoy that level. That's probably my favorite level of this last world. It's just so short and sweet. But anyhow, now we're getting into the real castle itself. Chain Link Chamber. Now, this level can actually be pretty tough. But, uh... I'll let you guys see for yourselves. Anyway, on to my uh, my PlayStation All Stars rant. But um, it felt also, aside from the the sad, ill-fated franchises they have featured in the game, it felt like the whole thing was just a marketing gimmick for uh, the new Devil May Cry game, um, and maybe some others. They have Raiden from uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid or Metal Gear Rising is the game that he's in, which looks like a glorified you know fruit ninja to me, but. I've heard pretty good things about it, actually. I don't know if anyone others played it, but let me know if you have. But, I, I mean, otherwise, I don't know. I, I couldn't really get into the game the first time I played it, but this time, I, I really kind of enjoyed it. I found my guy to be uh, to be Spike, who uh, is the main character from Ape Escape, which is just kind of ironic, because I'm also playing a game with monkeys at the moment. But, man, it really made me want to go find that game again for the PS1. It probably goes for quite a bit. I should go check it out, actually, because, uh, I don't know, I remember having some really good times with that game. If you're into, like, puzzles and, and PS1-era games, that is a really good one, and I'm not even a fan of puzzle games, and I think that's pretty clear by the type of games that I play, uh, and my dislike for puzzles in such games as Lufia, well, especially Lufia, I can't even think of any others that really had especially hard puzzles off the top of my head, but, yeah, so, uh, that, that's how I felt about PlayStation All-Stars. Pretty fun game. I go with the, sh the small, quick guys. Um, does it hold a candle to Smash Brothers? No, no it doesn't. I mean, I like how they tried to diversify it enough to not make it a complete clone, but it, you know, the bottom line is that their comparisons will undoubtedly be made, because it is pretty much the same game, but not, not a bad game. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, what else did I play? I played <laughs> this Naruto game. Um, that my buddies have really gone into. I don't even know which one it is. There are a bajillion Naruto games. Uh, I haven't watched the Naruto series in a long time, and uh, as far as the games go, I had... I, well, I still have Clash of the Ninja 2 for the GameCube, but I had one other one for the PS2 for a short while, and then I ended up trading it into GameStop for credit, which was just a terrible idea. I don't know why I was thinking. I just wanted to kind of get rid of the PS2 games that I didn't really want, and the only, like, solution I could think of... Oh, these bees are catching up fast. Jeez, that was close. Uh, the only solution I could think of was take it to GameStop and see how much you can get for these games. And, I mean, the, the truth of it is I'm probably never going to play those games again, so I really didn't mind getting rid of them. But at the same time, it's just like such little amounts of money you actually get. Uh, well, you get even less if you want cash versus in-store credit, which of course I don't want in-store credit. I don't even have any of the systems that you guys offer anymore. 
Jeez, but I'm sure I went on to use that money on some Nintendo games, probably. Oh, so here's Toxic Tower. This is the last level for today. I know it's going to be kind of a short video, but uh, this level, when I first played this growing up, first beat the game, I remember this level being probably the most difficult in the game, and now looking back on it, I don't really know why. Like, this beginning part right here, where you got the little, whatever, ankle biters, whatever their names are, seriously, that's probably the hardest part, just getting up those stairs before the Toxic catches up with you, because then after that, you're just flying through it. Um, it. It's actually a really cool level because you do get the chance to use every single one of your, well not every single one, but most of your animal buddies with the exception of Rambi, but it goes from Snake to Squawks to uh, the Spider, whose name I forget. I'm just going to call him Spider because he's, you know, he's generally evil. He's a spider after all. Uh, giant spiders. Jeez. Be the death of me. That's why the movie It was so good. You know why? Because first of all, he's a clown and he's scary as hell and then he turns into a giant spider at the end. Like, that's just like perfect writing right there. I mean, that's why Stephen King does what Stephen King does, you know. I don't know, you know all the other weird stuff he's in, like Langoliers. Holy crap. Langoliers was so weird. I mean, it didn't help that they had the weird CGI monsters in that that were just mouths from, like, the early 90s. or well, that's probably mid-90s by then, but still computer graphics back then. Ooh, harsh. Terrifying in and of themselves, if you ask me. But, uh, getting set for the, uh, Ender's Game movie to come out. That's going to be pretty cool, and uh, it looks cool. It's got Harrison Ford in it. I mean, how can it be that bad, right? Unless it's, you know, Crystal Skull, too. I mean, well, that, I don't know. People harp on Crystal Skull too much for it, the movie that it was, because it was still a solid Indiana Jones movie, and he is an archaeologist. It makes sense that he would be dealing with ancient aliens at some point in time. It's just that, you know, it, maybe it just wasn't the right time. But anyhow, that's a whole other can of worms, because then we could talk about Spider-Man 3 on top of it, but uh, I'd rather not. Uh, especially talk about Spider-Man 3. But anyhow, so I've never actually read this series of books. Um, I don't know if any of you out there have, but I know there's like three or four of them. And I don't know if I should read the whole series or just read the first one, because that's, you know, the one the movie's about. But, uh, I hear they're pretty easy reads, and I don't mind a good, like, easy read as long as it's got quality to it. Like, The Hobbit, you know, if you read The Hobbit, and I'm sure a lot of you have, it's really more or less a children's book. Uh, but it's Lord of the Rings, so people have the misconception that it's going to be just as adult as Lord of the Rings is. But that's why I don't understand why people hated The Hobbit so much, because it really, like, I had just read The Hobbit. I'm sure most people that saw the movie hadn't read the book in years, maybe a decade. So I thought they did a pretty good job of doing exactly what I would have expected. But, you know, that's, that's people's opinions. It can be pretty critical sometimes, especially on the Internet. But I'm sure we've all experienced that one way or another. Anyhow, so there we go with Toxic Tower. Not that tough. Pretty fun, actually. And then we get to the showdown. Come on, K. Rule. Where are you at? Oh, it's just Donkey Kong tied up. Ooh, coin. Better play some music. Forget untying him. Oh, and he got stolen again. By stolen, I mean kidnapped, but whatever. He's as good as some piece, some item in this game. I mean, it's not like he's a playable character. There goes King K. Rule. Look at him getting away in this airship. To the Flying Croc we go! That's going to do it, guys. I'm going to end the episode off there. Next episode, we're going to finish the game and start with the infamous Screech's Sprint level. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. This has been the Johnny Cage. Please subscribe, like, comment if you have not. I'll talk to all of you guys very soon with some more video game fun.